Vicari Theo. I'm an artist and designer with a focus in collage art. And um, I, have, but I have like an array of other forms of art that I work through, like um, uh, design and uh, street art and all other kind of forms like that. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, but I currently live in Los Angeles. I'm gonna be giving you insight on how I've been creating through uncertainty through these times. But first, before I do that, I want to talk about what I was doing pre-COVID. So um, what I've been doing is, um, it's collage, like I said, collage art. Um, I've been doing collage art for about seven years. But, um, and like I use vintage magazines and uh, sometimes text, but I, I put it together in like a, cur a curatorial way of making art from already made images. And, um, uh, let me see. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's really difficult working with the, the timer thing. Okay, so um, I've also studied graphic design and um, but like I've been, I have been studying graphic design in high school. Uh, and, uh, but like at this point, I mean, and at this point I've been working with programs like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator for upwards of 15 years. But like halfway through my senior year, I started taking my graphic design experience and putting it into a clothing line. Um, uh, but now it, the clothing line has become uh, what I now call This Brand USA, AKA This Brand Was Made in the Future. Um, I've also taken my graphic design and collage work and put it into the streets. I've been painting murals for about five years now, but only recently started experimenting with wheat pasting my collage work. When I traveled to Kathmandu in 2018 with micro galleries, I got the chance to wheat paste my work for the first time and instantly become, I mean, I got instantly became addicted to wheat pasting. Now you can see my paste ups all over Los Angeles. But I also do collage workshops where I teach people a quick and easy way to make their own collages. These workshops I host now are mostly for adults, um, well, really people of all ages, but um, it's mostly like for adults. But, um, I've also worked at, with schools uh, and uh, well, high schools, and I've worked with like sophomores and juniors on how to communicate through words, um, how, to, how to communicate without using words, I should say. Um, but aside from the work that I do in my own career, I'm also an art program assistant for a community art studio in Skid Row, Los Angeles. If you're not familiar with Skid Row, it's one of the largest concentrations of homelessness in America. So our program serves as sort of like um, uh, an art therapy kind of thing, but we're technically not art therapists, but it's a very, very vital uh, program for the community. What we do is we offer free art supplies and um, a free space for people to come and create. We store their work and show their work whenever there's an opportunity in the city, um, like local art shows, festivals, and art walks. Um, I've helped curate multiple exhibits and plan art shows for our program as well. Every last Friday of the month, we host an open mic event where people can come in and freely express themselves through music, community art projects, and dance. We celebrate birthdays and milestones for the members of the program in efforts to make them feel like they're part of a family and cared for. Things like this are very important for people like them because they can walk around the streets and people won't even acknowledge their existence. So to make them feel at home is very important for us. But now when COVID-19 hit, all of this came to a screeching halt. It became very difficult for us to do these kind of things like, um, like connecting with people in large groups like we do with the program um, with the social distancing in place. So. I'm, I basically, my department that I work for in Skid Row has shut down until further notice. With my day job as an art program assistant being mostly an in-person, uh, large gathering type of group, um, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's been shut down. So, um, but what I've been doing is working in the shelter outside of doing art, um, just like being a, a line of support, like, um, passing out meals, getting people's mail, um, checking temperatures at the door when people come in and go, um, like throughout the day. Um, but like the most important thing that we do is to try to keep them indoors where it's safer. Um, 
along with the the safer at home order, um, LA County has opened hotels for the uh, the more at risk people out on the streets, uh, people that have uh, um, immune. Uh, what's the word? Um, people people that are, that people that have like, like immune uh, compromised illnesses like HIV and stuff like that. Uh, so we try to put them in a place where they can be safer, like like away from Escape Row, because this is very, very, um, it's a very toxic environment. Um, but after after all of that, um, well, with all of that, um, events that I have been, uh, events that I have been part of have been canceled and uh, causing me to lose out on thousands of dollars. Um, I was scheduled to participate in art book fairs, zine fests, and corporate events where I was commissioned to paint murals or install art pieces. This has made me. This has made me throw away my entire 2020 plan. Like I wasn't able to do anything that I had set for the year. Um, but I'm sure a lot of artists are experiencing this right now. Is like this is a, like a lot of us. Like this is our livelihood. Like surviving off of doing this. Like working with my job in Skid Row pays for my rent, but what I do with art pays for literally everything else. So it's just really lost out on a lot. With the need to social distance, it has made us have to reevaluate how we connect with each other. Through the future, I mean, through, I mean, though, the, though the future of how we will connect with each other is uncertain, as artists, we can utilize this time to get creative with the way that we connect with our audience and supporters. With the rise of video calls and, um, and live streams, um, things like this are really good for artists to utilize. What I've, what I've been doing is doing my collage workshops via Zoom, where people can provide their own materials. And um, I just kind of set up like a little lesson plan for people to participate in. And it's, it's been really fun and people like to come in and support. But what I've also been doing is um, I've been utilizing this time to, um, to challenge myself as an artist. Like, what can I do to better myself through all of this downtime? So what I've been doing is um, making sure that I make like at least one or two collages a day. Um, but even before that, um, I try to challenge myself to work on something that I don't normally work with, like getting like, a drawing done every day. I'll, kinda, I'll call it creative fitness. Um, what we have here actually is uh, a virtual art gallery that I just released yesterday that shows all of the work that I've been working on through the, uh, the stay at home order. Um, this is like I just I wanted to utilize the technology that is available to us, and um, and uh, be able to to showcase it in a different way than uh, than what we we're able to do right now. I mean, just like utilize uh, the technology that is, is available to to anyone to connect with through like your phone or your computer. Um, I'll leave a link for the virtual art gallery for you to check out in the comment section. But, um, so this pandemic is, is something that we're all feeling across the globe and it's affected so many different communities in a number of different ways. Um, what we can do to the, the well, sorry, I, I'm, <laughs> my presentation went way longer. It was hard to work with the, the timer thing, but I'll, just, I'll wrap it up. Uh, the best advice that I can give artists is to utilize this time as best you can to uh, get better with connecting with each other and hone your skills.